the beautiful Snake River Canyon in South Central Idaho, right next to the town of Twin Falls. This is an iconic landmark, a real popular tourist attraction. Uh, People come from all over the country, even around the world, and stand near the bridge, watch base jumpers jump, but sometimes wonder, how did this landscape form? What story do the rocks have here? Now, the story of the canyon is a subject for another video, but today we're going to focus on these rocks and what these rocks have to tell us about what geologic events have transpired here. What do you see when you look at this image? How many distinct rock layers can you pick out? Can you identify the rocks? Can you tell what has taken place here? Well, we're going to go on a little journey here and look at these rocks in a little bit more detail and see if we can figure this out together. Here we are looking at the north side of the canyon, the same view we were looking at with the drone there. And this is where we can really start to see some of the differences in the rocks, the characteristics, the colors. And this is where I think we can pick out a few distinct layers. How many layers can you pick out here in this scene? To me, it looks like there's four distinct layers. We have this lower layer down here, which looks like its upper contact is somewhat irregular, kind of rises and falls a little bit. Then we have this second layer here, just above it, that has a little bit different texture and look to it and color compared to the rocks below. The third layer is perhaps the most distinct, this beige layer that goes right below the bridge itself, but then it tends to pinch out a little bit as we move off to the east. And then finally, the fourth layer here which actually uh, seems to be made out of a very layered mass of rock but seems to go from the top of the third layer all the way up to the bridge and the road up above well here we are at the overlook the main overlook for the snake river canyon next to the twin falls visitor center good place to get information yet there's no information here about the geology of the canyon nothing telling you about the rocks nothing telling you about the landscape Um, and yet we have this intriguing landscape and those interesting layers over there on the north side of the canyon Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to head over there i mean all geology uh, good and good geology involves actually making direct observations and with the drone we can tell a little bit and with our own eyes and observations from here we can make a few uh, observations that might be helpful but i think we've got to go over there and look at those rocks up close now it looks pretty steep this is a big cliff face here pretty rugged landscape but there's a climbing area down there and i know a way down so i'm going to take you down right there next to the base of the bridge Uh, and we're going to look at these rocks up close together and piece together their geologic history. So let's go ahead and head on over. All right, hey, we made it. We did the scramble on the north side of the canyon, got down here looking right at the bridge just above us here, and then also looking at these distinct layers in the canyon wall just behind me. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each layer. There's really, I think, maybe four pretty distinct layers here on in the canyon walls in the Snake River Canyon. And we're gonna look at them, make some observations and piece this all together because there's a really fascinating story here about the volcanics, the volcanic regime of this area changing dramatically. So let's go ahead and start here with the lowermost unit, the unit that shows up at the bottom of the canyon down at the river's edge. And then right here where we're at now is the top of that unit. So I'll swing the camera around and we'll go check all out, check out all these rocks together. Okay, so we're starting with this unit right here. This is the top of the lowermost layer in the canyon. So from the point we're standing here, which is about halfway down into the canyon, from this point all the way down to the river, the rocks are all the same. It's essentially everything you're seeing there in this lower cliff unit here, right at the river's edge. So let's go ahead and take a good look at these up close. And what you'll see is we have a rock that is brown and made out of crystals, crystals of different uh, colors and sizes, but most of the colors look like their crystals, excuse me, look like they're white to colorless. Some of them are rectangular in shape. And so this is actually a rhyolite. These rhyolites here at the bottom of the Snake River Canyon are about uh, six million years old. And so these rocks here um, were erupted from volcano and we'll get to that here in a second it's a little bit reddish here you can see as we move kind of up on the outcrop 
grades more into a black color. In fact, the, the matrix, the area around the crystals, is a little bit more glassy. That's going to play into our story as well. So these are volcanic rocks. Again, a rhyolite about 6 million years old. As we work our way up, let's scramble up to this next noticeable spot here. And we can see that the, you lose a little bit of the red. And here it's a lot more black. Here it's black and very glassy. If you look at the, the, the uh, material around those light colored crystals, it's actually a little bit glassy. It's much like obsidian. This is a rock called vitrophere. It is a volcanic rock that basically fits in between the spectrum from rhyolite to obsidian. So it has the crystals like the rhyolite does. You can see those light colored crystals again here. But the matrix, the area surrounding those crystals is black and glassy, basically obsidian. So this is a hybrid rock in between rhyolite and obsidian. And it all comes from these silica rich lavas that form. Here's a nice view here. Uh, here we go. Kind of looking down on this slab here with some of these light colored crystals. Now you often get these vitrophores at the margins of any sort of rhyolite lava flow. So where the rhyolite or the lava is in contact with the air or the ground, that's where you typically see the margin cooling a little bit quicker and starting to um, turn into glass. Basically, it's cooling so quickly, minerals aren't forming in that space around those larger crystals, and you're getting this um, vitrophere here. And the place right here, you can see where it's more red with these black blocks. It's more of like an obsidian, or excuse me, more of like a breccia here. So here we're seeing the rhyolite grade into vitrophere, black vitrophere, but it's also starting to show signs of being broken up. And all of these signs here point to this unit being a rhyolite lava flow, not a pyroclastic flow, not an ash deposit, but actually a, a flow of thick, pasty, rhyolitic lava just kind of oozing across the landscape. Now, the age of this rock is instructive because it's about 6 million years old, and this is the last gasp, the last time that the Yellowstone volcano erupted here in the Twin Falls area about six million years ago. Those eruptions from the Yellowstone hotspot began in this area about 10 or so million years ago. But by six million years ago, this part of, the, of North America had moved off the hotspot. And this is literally the last gasp of this eruption here um, in the Snake. Here is what's now the Snake River Canyon. So we've got our first story here is the Yellowstone hotspot and these rhyolites that form the lower layers in the Snake River Canyon. What we'll do now is start working our way up to younger layers and see how things change a little bit. So let's see if we can get up these steep slopes together. I'll do the huffing and puffing. You do the watching. Very steep slopes. We have another outcrop here right in front of me. See what we have here. Looks like more of what we just saw. This red and black breccia with chunks of the vitrophere, black glassy rock with the white crystals uh, preserved on the interior. So we have this, this breccia here. And again, this is common on the outer surfaces of these rhyolitic lava flows. As we look up from this point, um, interesting contrast here, we have some solid like rhyolite vitrophere, but then right next to it is more of this breccia that's just sort of, uh, looks like it's almost plastered on the wall here, but it's actually pretty well cemented. Like you come over here and try to give these rocks a yank out of their matrix and for the most part, oh, I barely got that one out, but the most part, they're pretty well cemented. So again, rhyolite, the last gasp of Yellowstone, oozing out these thick lava flows, similar to what we see happening within the Yellowstone caldera today. A lot of the most, the youngest eruptive products in that area are these thick pasty lava flows that just oozed out and built up the topography. So we're seeing evidence of that here. Got this large, 
breccia here above us. And to get up and around this unit, we're gonna have to walk this way and see if we can get to the top of it and see what is the next layer, the next geologic unit sitting on top of this. So you can see in places, um, it's very what we would call clast supported, meaning it's mostly fragments of these rocks without a lot of the fine grain material between, between what we would call the matrix. So in places, it's quite a clast supported breccia. And then over here, looks like we're gonna get a little scramble to get up to the top of this unit. So again, a little perspective here. We were way down here, the rhyolite outcrop, and now we've come up through this breccia layer here. So let's see if we can do a little easy scrambling on this stuff with one hand, I suppose, and get to this next layer. So now we can see a distinct break in the slope. These big blocks in the breccia end abruptly right here in front of me. And then we have a lighter colored layer here. So let me get one more step up to get you up to this ledge. And then we can walk along here and take a look at this next unit. Okay, so this looks like a pretty good spot here. So we've got this breccia layer just below us here, down by my feet, big ledge, and now we have this light colored layer. We can see it has some crude layering in it. Looking at it closely, I'm not really seeing any crystals. Looks like it's actually made out of grains of sediment, soft, fine grains. Um, so it's sedimentary. There's a few in places, larger blocks in it, like right here. But for the most part, it's dominated by this grain size that I would say is kind of silty. It's finer than sand with these occasional bigger rocks embedded in it. So we could come up with any sort of story here that works. Um, this has not been, to my knowledge, this hasn't been published on. If you go back to the beginning of the video and look at the overall geometry of this unit, it's actually not a pervasive layer. It actually pinches out as you move to the west, and it also pinches out as you move further to the east. I don't know if we'll be able to see that from here, but let's try coming down here. Yeah, we can't quite see that from here, but you can see it continuing on um, just to this point here. But just past the bridge, if you go back and look at those uh, drone shots at the beginning of the video, you'll see this is sort of lens shape. It sort of pinches out. And this, I think, my interpretation of this, is I think it's a, basically a, a low area that was possibly filled in with water at times, maybe like a, a small pond, maybe a bit of a, a wetland potentially, um, maybe windblown material blew in here from time to time. But it basically represents a transition from the rhyolite, these explosive eruptions from Yellowstone, sometimes oozing out this thick pasty lava at times. It's a transition between that period of volcanic activity and the next period of volcanic activity, which sits just above us here. And so let's walk a little bit further so we can see this unit in a little bit better detail. Uh, let's see, this might be a pretty good spot here. So if you come look at this closely, you'll see there's a lot of holes in the base of it. So these are gas bubbles or what we would call vesicles. As you move up into the unit, uh, you really don't see any of those vesicles. This is a large stack of basalt. And basalts are very different than rhyolites. They're at the opposite end of the magma spectrum. We can see that the base of it in contact with this, this silty layer here is quite rubbly. Um, I'm not seeing any evidence here of pillow lavas. So I guess if this was a actual lake, we might expect to see pillows. Uh, instead, it looks like it was 
at least dry, maybe not dry but it just didn't have a lot of water content to it nice little example here of the basalt actually kind of penetrating down uh, into the sediments here but it's quite rubbly at the bottom and then i think the other cool observation here is notice that there's spots where the silt is actually pretty red it's actually a different color than it is just below where it's a little bit more beige colored and this would be the oxidation so the heat from the basalt is being transferred down into the silt and it's actually oxidizing some of the iron in the silt and making it that brick red color really nice fantastic exposure right along here uh, here we're looking at the underside of the lava flow and again just how rubbly and irregular that is so let's head down a little bit further here not sure we're going to run out of exposure here with all the rockfall uh, deposits here's a really nice place where the the contact is nice and sharp you can see right here between these two layers just how sharp that contact is between that red um, silt horizon and then these basalts here and then from this point uh, all the way up to the rim up where the bridge is it's all basalt and these basalts range in age from I think some of the oldest ones down here are maybe about two million years old and then the one at the rim of the canyon on the north side is about 95,000 years old so we have a series of basaltic flows from these shield volcanoes that were producing these runny lavas instead of the thick pasty lavas like we saw down here at the bottom <clears throat> excuse me at the bottom of the canyon with the rhyolite we have these very low viscosity fluid lava flows so again a really cool contrast in eruptive behavior right here in the walls of the snake river canyon uh, again one of my favorite places to explore and just a fascinating look at how the volcanic character in an area can change pretty quickly from the six million year old rhyolites down at the bottom of the canyon to these two million year old basalts here with some of these other layers in between just awesome well hey thanks for joining me on this fun little adventure it was fun to get out scramble down into the canyon and take another look at these rocks in a different location i hope you enjoyed learning about the history the volcanic history of the rocks and the walls of the snake river canyon got a base jumper that just jumped behind me here you never know what you're going to get at the prime bridge anyway thanks for your support of the channel thanks for uh, being a great part of our community and we'll see you next time take care